The Build Show today, we're talking HVAC systems. Now, I've got a house that you guys have seen before here. This is my T-stud house. I also made a video about the roof system because I've got an insulated roof deck. But what I haven't told you before is this is actually gonna be my in-law's house. And when we talk about HVAC systems, I wanted to get a really good system for my in-laws, but I also wanted to be conscious of their budget. I really wanted a good value. So in the build show today, we're gonna to review the HVAC system for this house, talk about why I think it's excellent for this particular home, but we're also gonna talk about some things that I think represent a really good value. Today's video is sponsored by Carrier. Let's get going. All right guys, so we're back at this house. We've done a fair amount of videos already here. Let me tell you about the envelope first and we're gonna talk about the system. I've got an insulated uh, floor here on top of my uh, concrete slab. I've got T studs on the outside walls with some zip R that will eventually get filled probably with closed cell foam. And then up in my attic system, I've got an air conditioned attic, meaning all of my HVAC equipment is gonna be within the air conditioned space. That's really important for a good system. And then on top of my roof, I've got insulation, but I'll also be spraying foam right up against the roof deck. So I'm starting with a really good envelope. Oh, by the way, I'm also got triple glazed windows uh, from European Architectural Supply here. So we've got a good system for the envelope. So then when it comes time for the HVAC system, I wanted to get, of course, get the, get the house engineered. You wanna get at a minimum a manual J done for all your houses so that you know, hey, with this type of envelope, how much load am I gonna have? What size equipment do I need? Now I went a step beyond and with Positive Energy, I had them design and specify all the equipment and the ductwork for me as well. And we're gonna get into that in a second, but let me tell you about the layout and then we're gonna talk about this specific carrier system that we used here. So this main space in the house, this is the open family room, living room. I've got a master bedroom and a master bath over here. We've got two bedrooms and a bathroom. This I would kind of consider the main living space of the house. Now the house is not big, it's a ranch style house, meaning it's all on one level. That's of course really nice if you're retired, you don't have to worry about steps. But the house is not very big either. This is about a 2200 square foot house. And this main space, including the kitchen, the butler's pantry, and this kind of small living room, is all gonna be one zone. And we're gonna use a traditionally uh, a traditional piece of HVAC equipment, which is a horizontally mounted unit with a pretty good sized fan, probably somewhere around 1,000 or 1,200 CFM. That's a heat pump system that will both heat and cool this main space. Now, as you walk down this hallway, there's a uh, kind of home office space here, a separate full bathroom here, and then this bedroom is kind of a multi-flex space. Again, I mentioned this is for my in-laws. Uh, they're in their retirement years. They're setting this house up to be the last house that they build or the last house that they live in, I should say. And this room will be home gym, home office, but it also in the future could be a caretaker's room. You know, someone who might be a live-in uh, person to help them out with daily duties as they age. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a mini split on the wall here. So this would be a carrier mini split that will have a unit that will both heat and cool just this room separately. And then as we walk from the laundry room over through the garage, I've got one other unit going in that will be just for the garage space. This is one big open space and we're gonna also use a mini split on the wall here in the garage to bring some space conditioning. Now this garage will be fully insulated and fully uh, encapsulated but I do also wanna mention that we brought the walls that separate the garage and the house all the way to the roof deck. See how my zip uh, system sheathing here goes from the slab all the way up to the underside of the roof? That allows me to tape all that before I framed this um, kind of ceiling joist area. So I've got really good air sealing behind me between the house and the garage. Now we'll come in and fully insulate this as well. So this mini split won't have a lot to do. We're just gonna keep it at you know, 80 degrees in the summer and maybe uh, 55 or 60 degrees in the winter. Just kind of keeping that temperature band so when they store things out here, it'll be stored within a semi-conditioned space. With that being said, I've got a special guest for you to actually get into the mechanics and of course the uh, kind of specific nerdiness on this system. Let's go up in the attic and we're gonna meet my friend Christoph Irwin. Oh man, isn't this a great attic, guys? 
This is a condition space up here. So I actually have foam on top of my roof, plus I'll be foaming at the roof deck. So all of this will be part of the air conditioned envelope. It's got a nice big space. And up in the attic, I have Christoph Erwin. Christoph. Hey, Matt. Hey, brother, how are you? I'm well. Good Thanks to see for joining you. me over here, man. Thanks for inviting me. So I gave these guys a tour of the house. I talked about how this unit is, con is conditioning basically the main space, and then we've got a mini split head conditioning this additional bedroom. Yeah, yeah. Why is this box different than the standard heat pump box that grandma has in her house? Wow. It's a big question, isn't you it? You just got me yeah, kicked back on my heels in some sense. There's so much to say about yeah. that, but output supply temperature was the first thing that comes to mind. Do not confuse modern heat pumps with old heat pumps. Old yep. heat pumps had supply temperatures that were above your thermostat set point, but below your skin temperature, yeah. right? So as soon as you do that, a bunch of air flowing around below skin temperature, it's a com comfort complaint. To this day, that's the 80s. To this day, heat pumps suffer from that unfair comparison from yeah. the 80s. And this is blowing hot air. Oh yeah, this, this will be in the upper 90s. Upper 90s or higher. It can be higher uh, in the low 100s. But, a couple of big things about this. One is you mentioned coming up the ladder there, like look at the space, like you can work here. You can reach the back where this chassis mm -hmm. hits that supply plane I and mean, you can seal that joint. This box has, you know, it's a rectangular box with refrigerant and electricity and condensate coming out. Heats and cools like the old heat pumps, but that's where the comparison ends. The insulation of the box, the, the way the coil is designed, the way the fans are designed, the energy use that results from that, the energy use reductions, fractional. Of, of a standard heat pump. And a lot quieter too, right? Oh my gosh, yeah, the sound pressures on these are much, much lower. Oh yeah. my gosh, yes. What we really want is we want to deliver equipment to the job site through our designs that, such that your installer is successful in a comfortable house, Yep. right? So to that extent, having the control system that is in native 24 volt, but then it can mesh up to any third party controller, like we're using the Ecobee 5 on this one, that's huge, right? That's so in other words, you don't need something to transfer that language you don't to need the a controller. third party controller. Got it. So that, basically I can hook right into other ones that will control this unit. That's right, right. And then some of the things this controller the controllers can do and this unit can do then is actually go after latent, go after humidity, right? Now, with a bomber envelope like this in climate zone 2A, I'm gonna still wholeheartedly say you need some supplemental dehumidification. Yeah. But you, this, this is always, it is always supplemental dehumidification. This is your workhorse for drying a system. Yep. Now I do have a separate ERV in this house. I don't have the ERV, uh, I don't have a fresh air input here, right? The ERV is doing that. And I do have a separate dehum, but because this is gonna have fan on pretty much yeah. all the time. That's huge. And be able to throttle the uh, compressor outside, this is gonna do a lot of the uh, heavy lifting when it comes to dehumidification, right? That's right, and you mentioned it's on all the time, so it's filtering all the time. And I think for your listeners to understand is like, when someone's talking to you about a heating and cooling system, of course it's gonna heat and cool. It's, you should almost like, you know, feign a yawn, like yes, it's gonna heat and cool. <laughs> How is it gonna filter? How is it gonna dry? Yep. How is it gonna ventilate, right? Yeah. That's really where the magic comes in. And so the fact that this thing runs all the time, that's filtration that's not based on the need to heat or cool. We just mentioned it has an enhanced latent control, still needed sec secondary um, dedicated dehumidifier. And then for ventilation on your house, man, like right there is an amazing ventilation system. Yeah. So we don't have to have any, we don't have to try to make the Swiss Army knife of mechanical systems, yeah. right? We can Agreed. dedicate to Let's that. Let's let the carrier system do what it's great at which is providing heating and cooling dehumidification yep, of the space. Yeah. And, and just lastly, this right here. So metal galvanized ducting, right? Cannot say enough about the, the simple gift that keeps on giving of that. Yeah, it's a right. passive, durable system. You only got one good chance to get it right. That's right. And you got it right. All right, Christoph, here is one of the outdoor units. We actually have three outdoor units here, and this is the biggest. I believe this is my two-ton unit. That's right. Which is gonna be connected one-to-one -one with that unit we were just by. How is this unit different than the square boxes that you see outside of houses, <laughs> typically? I love it. Um, in myriad ways. Hey, you want me to keep going? <laughs> yes. So this Would was, you expand, please? <laughs> this was designed from the ground up to achieve elegant thermodynamics in multiple dimensions. Ooh. And the way that manifests is this unit has a compressor in it that gets hot. Okay. So when you want extra heating, what if you wrap the compressor in a heat exchanger and harness that heating to give it to you in the inside of your house? How about that? That's what these things have, right? Conventional outdoor units and heat pumps don't have that. This unit, because of that and other elegant thermodynamic control schemes, 
with how refrigerant is managed. I mean, frankly, that's the whole VRF ductless magic is how they manage refrigerant and how they manage the oil that's in the refrigerant. Okay, so hang on a sec there. You just said the word VRF. If you're watching this, you don't know what that is. Will you give us the explanation of what VRF is? Oh, I will, and I'll go one level deeper. So VRF stands for variable refrigerant flow. Okay. Right? So if you think about your car, you have variable fuel flow. Okay, right? meaning when you press the gas When you pedal. press the passport, you get more flow, more go and less go, right? Most standard, not even most, all standard heat pumps were either on or off. Mm -hmm. So on full or off, right? You, if you don't like off, you can floor it. If you don't like floored, so they were basically like trying to just drive your truck with the key yep. instead of the accelerator pedal. So that's the fundamental of VRF. That's a great analogy. But then, Manufacturers have this separation between VRF and ductless. Okay. And interestingly, you can that unit upstairs, it would qualify in the ductless category even though it has ducts. So yeah, it, it takes some understanding. Fundamentally, what you have is that the LEV or the EEV, the linear expansion valve, is in this unit. So that means in the, here. the refrigerant line is basically sending the heating and cooling. It's already getting hot or cold going up mm -hmm. there. Whereas VRF, that LEV is at the indoor unit, so the refrigerant metering is occurring upstairs. It's a little bit subtle, probably easier to understand is this unit plugs into your breaker panel, this unit sends power to your indoor unit. That's ductless, ah, so ref refrigerant metering here, single source of power here, that's ductless. As soon as I send the refrigerant metering up there and give it its own source of power up there, now that's VRF. So that, that is like one thing that really trips people up and not for um, no good reason, because it's, it's a little confusing. And then the other thing that we were talking about earlier, Christoph, is that one of the old adages about heat pumps is not only are they providing cooler air, now these newer technology from Carrier provides hotter air, it's gonna feel hot to you, but how efficient is this at bringing heat in when it's really cold outside? Like, oh my is goodness. It, yeah. it, when it's 32 degrees out, that's pretty cold outside. My assumption is, this is maybe gonna to switch to resistance heat. Is That's that right. true or not? Oh, no, well, as an engineer, I should answer everything with it depends. In this house <laughs> at your, here in Texas for this design at your house, no. There's no need for electric resistance heat. This right here, is, so there's efficiency and then there's you know, effectiveness at delivering heat. This unit can create full heat capacity down to five degrees Fahrenheit, Ooh. single digits. Right? So even when it's five degrees Fahrenheit You're above getting your zero, we can still, there's still enough heat in the air that this unit can pull it out of the air and send it into the house at don't need heat strips. Your full rated capacity at five degrees F. The smaller units in this line can go negative single digits, like oh negative gosh. four degrees F. But just let's take one minute and understand what's fundamentally happening. When we're cooling the air in your, let's do, we just had a terrible ice storm in Texas. Yeah, we sure did. So we're heating the air in the house using this. This is pulling heat out of the outdoor air when it's five degrees Fahrenheit. That's amazing, first of all, let's mm -hmm. recognize that. But to the refrigerant, which can exist at like negative 80, negative 90 degrees Fahrenheit, five degrees, there's a lot of heat there. I can yeah. pull a lot of heat out. That's, that's kind of part of the magic. The indoor unit in the summer works in a very similar way. It, it makes itself colder than your air. If I want you know, 50 degree air blowing through my air handler, I need to make my coil in the upper 30s. Obviously can't go below 32 for some clear reasons. So you just make something colder and it can pull heat out. So Christoph, this is one of the three compressors that I've got going in this house. So this is the largest. What's the benefit of having more than one compressor? Because some of these carrier units, you could have more than one indoor unit feeding to a single outdoor unit, right? That's, that's exactly right, yeah. So we talked about, in terms of like vocabulary lessons, we talked about VRF and ductless aren't the same things, although they're very similar and you, you wouldn't be faulted for thinking, oh, they're basically the same thing. Similarly, this is a, mini split, right? It's split between the indoor and outdoor. It's mini typically if it's smaller than a ton and a half, this mm -hmm. is not. But there are also multi splits where there's an outdoor unit serving multiple indoor units. When you choose to go that way, your designer needs to take into account how the home is gonna be used. And, and also things like your, um, your comfort threshold with resilience, right? We just went through a big resilience event, yep. right? If you have three compressors outdoors, you have three points that need to fail before you have zero heat. You have a situation- Or cold. Or, or cold, right, exactly, yeah. before you, have, you can't cool it in the summer, exactly right. So when we do, it's interesting, we could look at the cost, right? There's not, there's not a lot of cost delta between doing three one-to-ones and a multi-split. Now, I will put in here that 
you could argue that the embodied energy of having three compressors and the resources is higher. Is, is higher. That's true. What you have here, though, is you have this serving the central core of your house. You have one bedroom that wants to meet its own temperature profile. And you don't know that someone in the bedroom might be cold and want it on heat. Meanwhile, you've got 20 people over Thanksgiving and you need some cooling in the main zone. If they're on one outdoor unit, somebody's unhappy. Yeah, you can only do either heat or cold, not That's both. Right. And the garage, because it's, it's, it's so responding to the outdoor condition. Yeah, and we're uh, not gonna have thing. it as hot or cold as the house and the garage. We're just tempering this space. So it can be a workshop for storage out here, those kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the other thing that I think is interesting to talk about, Christoph, this is not a compressor, by the way. This is a, <laughs> this is a standalone uh, HEPA filter, which is a fairly new product uh, from Care. They've got other standalone units, but this one is actually HEPA grade. Where are we going to use this in the house and why? Right. Good, good question. So we put this in the room that has the wall head serving it. So the wall heads, they have that filter that pulls out. It, it'll remind people of a giant like dryer lint screen. Mm -hmm. And it is not able to filter to the extent, to the quality that we know is important now, right? One interesting thing about the COVID pandemic is the whole of the United States, the whole of the world, excuse me, is like, oh, small things I can't see are really bad for my health. Matter. Right? So HEPA, <laughs> matter a lot. So HEPA filtration, standalone HEPA filtration, it is really important to do in a bedroom. Mm -hmm. You spend a lot of time there. And it is really important to do if your sole source of filtration in that room otherwise would be a wall head with, mm -hmm. with poor filtration. It's a fantastic so, retrofit for anyone. So in other words, this bedroom where that mini split head is, this will be a unit that can be used there to get really, really top-notch filtration, even though the mini split head has some amount of filtration. It's nowhere near this level. So we're gonna have really good filtration in that bedroom. Whereas our high static pressure, our big fan up in the furnace, can have a big filter that can do really good filtration, not HEPA quality, but really good filtration. And that's taking care of the main part of the house. Nailed it. That's right. I love it. Christoph, thanks so much for coming out. Uh, guys, I'll put a link to Christoph's company, and he's got an amazing podcast. You should definitely go subscribe. But we're going to cut the video here. We're going to actually continue construction, and we'll come back here in about three months or so when everything's complete so I can give you a tour of the system. See you soon. Hey guys, welcome, come on in. Funny story, it didn't take us three months, it took us more like 18 months to finish this house since you were here last. Not so funny story, my mother-in-law passed away like six months ago. Huge bummer that she never did get to live uh, in this house that I was building for her and my father-in-law. But the house is beautiful, the system's working amazing. We finished about 30 days or so ago, the outside's still a big dirt pit, but the inside is amazing. We've had 100 degree weather, and this house has been totally cool and extremely comfortable. Now you saw it under construction, but this is the kind of bedroom side of the house, master bedroom and two guest rooms and a hall bath, main family room space here, kitchen, and all of this main space is from the unit we saw in the attic that has great filtration and is the main unit for the house. We're gonna go up there and take a look at that in a second. But this room we filmed in, and I pointed to this wall saying, here's where the mini split head's gonna go. Now that's in place and you can see what that uh, looks like. This is the room that we figured might be a caretaker's room in the future. They've decided to make it kind of their home um, media room or family room for lack of a better term. So we did some built-ins and a TV. But what's cool about this room is we can control the temperature individually from the rest of the house with this remote right here. This is kind of a neat feature. You can turn the LED temperature on or off if you want. But one thing I did want to mention, when we shot the video with Christoph a year and a half ago, we had a, an older version of this Carrier uh, standalone HEPA filter. This is their newer model. This is a really cool model. This is the XL, which has three-stage HEPA filtration. And what's cool about it, it has a particulate matter uh, reader on the top with it also uh, attaches to your carrier app if you want to. And what it's telling us now is we have about 29, I don't know what it is, parts per million probably at PM 2.5. And it's green, which means we're good. 
When I was messing with the blinds earlier, I noticed that particulate matter went up and the reader that I have at my house whenever I cook goes up. It's a good reminder that we really need to be using our exhaust hoods whenever we're cooking and that things we do in the house will affect the indoor air quality. But I like this unit in this room because the filter on top of this mini split is really easy to get off and easy to clean, but it doesn't filter to the same level as the big unit in the attic, which has a big giant filter in it. So this is some supplemental filtration. And if this was a bedroom, even more important to have that supplemental filter there. With that being said, let's go up in the attic. Let me show you how that turned out. Okay, conditioned attics, big fan. If you're building anywhere in the south, I would highly recommend. All the insulation's at the roof line. And so now this space where my mechanicals are running is really just a couple degrees hotter. My Santa Fe controller is actually up here. We're 43% humidity up here, 82 degrees. The downstairs T-stats at 78. We're four degrees hotter, not bad at all. Separate dehumidifier with a supply for the attic. Separate fresh air system for the Zender, which is controlling the fresh air. And here's our carrier system right here. So this is uh, a finished install from what you saw earlier. You guys did a really nice job. We've got good tapes. Uh, you know, we got some good shirt sure tape on all the seams. We did uh, mastic everywhere we didn't tape. We've got that infinity purifier on there. So this attic, really, really nice spot for this HVAC system to live. Let's go outside and we'll finish up the video with the outdoor units. All right guys, let's close the video out here by the compressors outside. This is the two ton unit, which is the main unit for the house. Remember this house is about 23, 2400 square feet. And then the smaller of the two is the one that's running the bedroom, which is a 9,000, three quarter ton basically. So this is a, what they call a one-to-one. -one. This one runs directly to that head with this free on line here. And then this bigger one, the 12,000, which is a one ton, is working the garage space in the attic above the garage. I do want to point this out right here. Listen to this. You hear that? All you're hearing is a little wind noise potentially from that fan. It's crazy quiet out here. I could talk to you in a whisper and you could hear me. That's one side benefit of the VRF and ductless systems from Carrier. Extremely quiet. These could be right next to your pool or your master bedroom and you wouldn't worry about that noise drowning out your conversations. Really, really nice system. I'm really happy with it, how everything turned out over here. Guys, I'll put a link in the description, everything we talked about from Carrier. They've got some great people, including Justin, my local rep, who helped us with this one. So reach out to them uh, if you're interested in moving your builder business to Carrier. Great, great people. Hopefully you learned something on the tour today through this house that I, that I completed. Stay tuned for more videos from this house. We've got some exterior work coming up. If you're not currently a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.